Now, this, when Nehemiah arises, it's 400 years before Christ. They had been in captivity for 70 years. Then Ezra and the gang returned. They were allowed to go back to the land, but only 2% returned back to Jerusalem and to Israel. 2%. So in other words, they didn't go back to the promised land. Why did the 98% live in captivity still? It was their choice. I want to throw out something to you. You can live in captivity now and never enter your promised land like most Christians do. Most Christians, Emily, will never enter God's promised land. I'm not saying they're not going to heaven. They're going to go to heaven because they're saved by grace. Amen? But they're not living the promised land life. They're not living to their destiny or their divine potential. And so what we see here in Nehemiah's life, he was one of the ones, maybe he was born there, we don't know, but we know he's still there, but he asks for news about Jerusalem and about Israel. He gets the news about that divine city, the God, God city. So, so, so now, Babylon had destroyed everything, but now they're allowed to go back, and what happens? Ezra and the gang, they rebuild the temple. Now, this is something very strategic to understand in these days. Are we living in a mess right now? Yes. People have reproach. People are distressed. There's prejudice. There's violence. There's all kinds of horrible things happening. I started watching the debate the other night, and I shut it after like two minutes. I thought, is this what our nation has come to? I was disgusted. Where is the intellectual debate? Where is the wisdom of the ages? Where is the respect and honor due to anybody? People, even Christians right now say, I hate my governor, I hate my governor. Well, wait a second, time out, we're different, we're Christians, we don't hate anybody. You may not agree with a position and you should respectfully submit that, but we should love. <laughs> Nehemiah was like that, he was still held captive, but the others had returned to rebuild their Jerusalem and Israel, and, and uh, Ezra led the way as a priest, they rebuilt the temple but the challenge was, look what happened here. It says here, they could not build the walls. The survivors who were left from captivity in the province are there in great distress. The wall of Jerusalem is also broken down and its gates are burned with fire. What happens when you don't have walls? Chaos. What happens when you don't have walls? You have the, 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 the wealth the corruption, gangs, and everything else come into your country. You say, are you making a political statement right now? No, I'm making a policy statement right now. I do believe in a wall. I do believe in a wall because walls were God's plan to protect cities and protect people, and then you let in only ones with good intentions. That's why there had to be a wall around Jerusalem. That's why we actually, in my opinion, need a wall around our country to protect us from people whose intentions are not good, but also protect those that want to come into our nation as proper immigrants, like PMG. I'm an immigrant. I don't know how many immigrants we have in this country. I was born in Canada, and I only became American when I was 56 or 57. So listen, I understand immigration, and I respect the laws. But why did the enemy keep the walls down? Because they wanted to continue to see problems. They wanted, they wanted the Jews to have their little churches, but be weak. Can I tell you something about these last few years? When I said, I'll become an American, I'll speak up for the unborn, I'll speak up to, for racial reconciliation, I'll speak up for, for, for biblical values, I got all H-E double hockey stick came against me. What's wrong with you? Aren't you a seeker sensitive church? Well, number one, obviously I love the seekers, but I'm a sensitive to that guy. I'm submitted to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, and I'll only buy my, bow my knee to him. 